What's going on YouTube? My name is ADC Art Attack. His name is Bob, his name is Larry, and her name is Sally. And welcome back to a brand new Work It video. This time, in HD. <laughs> That's right, we've had an upgrade over here at ADC Art Attack. I hope you do enjoy the video, and please leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on the quality of the video, and if you did like the video by the end of the video, that is super. I've said video way too many times already. What are we doing today? <laughs> Today we are going to be comparing two, that's four, two sets of markers, and the markers we'll be comparing are, one sec, these. Yeah, they're really heavy. So in my right hand we have the Ohuhu markers, oh, I love that name, it's brilliant. We have the Ohuhu markers that have been massively requested by you guys. These are probably the most overhyped markers I've ever seen, and yeah, I figured we'd check them out. They cost 50 cents per marker, I have 120 in here, it cost me $60 for this entire pack, which is really cheap it that's really cheap they can't be good and in my left hand we have i don't even know tung fu shop ae farbish farbage farbage ain't a word graffiti s deutsch ah okay it's in german that explains a lot <laughs> basically what we have here is amazon's cheapest markers and i got 80 markers in here for 30 dollars. that's like around 30 cents per marker which is super super cheap like really cheap well now they can't be good Neither of these can be good. This is really cheap. So what we're going to do today is we're going to do a drawing of Thanos. Probably the greatest villain in the MCU. Um, definitely in the MCU. Probably the greatest villain in all comic books. I don't know. What do you think? Who is the greatest villain in comic books? Leave a comment down below. Let me know who you think. That'll be interesting. And then what we're going to do with the drawing is we're going to cut it in half. And on either side of this drawing, we're going to be colouring using the respective markers. And hopefully by the end of it, giving you a good assessment on how these markers work. And which one is worth it at their price. So with that being said, there really is not much more for me to say about this. We're going to jump right into have a look inside these bags and seeing what we've got to work with, how they work, get a feel for them, and then we're going to get on with drawing Thanos. I do hope you enjoyed today's video, and with that said, let's get on with it. Alrighty humans, here we are. We have ourselves three markers from each of the packs and I figured I'd try my best to pick the colours that I could and hopefully they match each other. That being said, I'm not a colour picker -er and I wear glasses, so my eyesight isn't that good for picking colours, but I think I did okay, kind of. What do you think? Ignore the dots. The dots are just there for me to focus my camera onto. Otherwise, we're going to end up going with a camera, which you don't want. So let's have a look at the pens. And before we actually start using them, let's just quickly look over the designs of them. And I got the Ohuhu markers. Yeah, I love saying that name. A really lovely, elegant design to them. It's very sleek. They look very professional and high quality. Here's an old Copic that I have. And as you can see, the designs are almost identical. Um, yeah, and the weight balance as well. They pretty much have the same weight. It's very light pens, but yeah, there you go. Now looking at one side of these pens, you'll find you'll have a broad tip pen. And uh, that's pretty standard for most of these markers. They do tend to have a broad tip then. The broad tip is really useful. Not many people use it, but it is very useful for the larger areas. I would recommend using them or at least trying to get used to them. Having a look on the other side, we have a bullet nib here. And yeah, bullet nib. I mean, it's the bullet nib. That's what it is. Let's give them a whirl and see how it works before we move on to looking at the... What's that say? Touch cool markers. That's what they're called. Okay, before we have a look at the touch cool markers, let's have a quick whirl of this and see what it feels like to use on the paper. Okay, these colors are really nice. I'm going to see if I can blend it in. And, um... Yeah, they look really good. And they are blending quite smoothly, actually. Look at... That. That's really nice. That is, um... That is good. Let's get that dark colour in there. A very dark colour. I'll be honest, not bad. The colours are really sharp, very bright, and bear in mind this is only a very small test. It doesn't really matter too much, it's just a couple of scribbles. They feel nice, they feel quite smooth in your hand, which is lovely. Yeah, let's jump over to the Touch Cool Marker here. Now this is a very different design. This thing is quite blocky, quite chunky, and um, yeah, it doesn't have any weight to it. It feels quite cheap and plasticky, but hey, who cares what they feel like, it's how they work. So once again, having a look at the nibs on this- Oh, you chunky thing, look at you. Wow, huh. Looking on the other side, we got a broad nib. Yeah, let's see how it works on a paper. Oh, that's nice. That's got so much coverage. Look how quick that just- 
Oh my god. Let's see if we can add a dark tone onto that. Guys, I'm... Nah, this isn't right. I'm getting some amazing coverage here, and this feels fantastic. Oh, you can go thin as well. Look at... That's incredible. You probably noticed the color um, pigment is very similar to my professional quality pro markers. So that poses a problem because... Give me a second. Right, these pro markers cost almost 10 times the amount of these touch calls. So I want to quickly try them out next to it and just see what we're dealing with here. They feel a lot harder. But in my opinion, they look better. Whew. <laughs> Because I spent a lot of money on pro markers and I do not want to be regretting my decision to not spend 30 euros for what I paid a lot more for. Anywho, that is enough of the test phase. As I say, it's a very small test and I didn't really need to do much with them just to kind of get a feel for them. We're going to jump into drawing Thanos right now. We're going to color this image in a full piece, half and half, same as usual. Throughout this entire piece, I'll be talking you through what I'm doing, how I'm doing, and hopefully helping you to create some of your own pieces of artwork, hopefully giving you some information you didn't know, and if you do own any of these markers, giving you some information on them that you probably didn't know, or you do know, and I'm just going to reiterate the point to you. So let's hold our criticisms for the end of this video, and I do hope you enjoy it. I will catch you in two seconds. Let's go. Okay everyone, so it is time to start drawing Thanos. Now this part of the video isn't actually using my new camera, I didn't have it at the time. So just the drawing phase of this before we get onto the colouring. The drawing phase is in the old quality, I do apologise for that. But as I say, I didn't have the camera at the time. And this particular image we're drawing our Thanos right here, is not actually sourced from anything in particular. What I did was I spent about half a day collecting various images and learning Thanos' character to make this drawing. I feel it's a little bit better than just straight up copying an image and it's gonna make it a little bit more personal and allow me to create an image that is gonna be best suited for this particular style of video. So I do hope you like it by the end and I will get back to you in a second when we are ready to color. And with the drawing done, I hope you do like it, we are ready to start colouring this thing in. So yeah, while I coloured this entire piece in, I'm going to be talking you through what it is that I'm doing, what I'm thinking at the time, because I took notes. And I'll also do my best to explain anything that I can think of regarding these pens, how they work, what I feel using them, and whether they're good or not. So to kick things off, I'm going to start by layering down my base layers. And while this is going to be like 95% covered, make no mistake, the colour you choose here will play a strong role in your piece overall. That being said, you are free to choose any colour you like. Just be aware it's going to apply a very soft touch to whatever you overlay on top of it. So I chose a light blue, even though I'm going to be putting blue on top of it because I am... Um, not cool enough to apply any special effects and yeah if we're honest that's a lot of extra leg work which i'm just too lazy to do i'm sorry oh and the style today so i'm not really gonna plan one because i'm gonna let the markers decide i mean i really have no idea what the strengths or weaknesses of these pens are so i'll just try one style and if that doesn't work i'm probably gonna be very sad but let's see what happens at the end of the day art is about learning and being free and i want to learn just as much as you guys and we learn through our trials so let's just see what happens So as I begin to add the shadows, I'm quickly learning that the ink flow of these pens is extremely high. Very similar to a sort of watercolour type thing, so that might work well for a style. Oh and I don't know who coloured the caps of these pens, but they just don't match up. Like this deep blue that I'm using here, it's um, well it's green. And while that is frustrating, I'm going to run with it because it might look cool having an odd colour in there. And you never know unless you try. Oh boy. So something I've started to notice here is the ink of these pens is really fast, but in combination with this huge nib, it is really 
It's really free. I don't really know how to word this or try to say what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but it's really awesome. It's not refined, it's extremely messy, and that is what I love about art, the freedom within artwork. And that's what I love about pens like this. I kind of don't have much control, and I really like that because it allows me to create a piece of artwork I've not necessarily planned for. You know, whenever you plan for something and you try to be refined for something, you usually make mistakes and you get very angry with yourself. But with this piece, it's just super free, it's fun, I'm enjoying it. And it really goes back to me just letting these pens decide what style works best for them. I think there's something poetic in this and I really do like using them. The variety of colours that you get within these packs are extensive. It is incredible. Although it says 80 markers, it really does feel like you have a considerably larger amount of pens. I was easily able to find a variety of colours to suit the yellow and the blue areas without any difficulties at all. The only issue being the colour coding of the caps. I was required to use a separate sheet of paper to test to make sure that I am selecting the right colours. And you will find that many of the colours are slightly off. In particular, the yellows are... Uh, I don't know. They just didn't really color code the caps correctly. And while this is a slight inconvenience, it's not a major problem as long as you take precautions and steps beforehand. Oh, and if you're wondering my design choice on the yellow, I don't really know. I just kind of went with whatever I felt was necessary and correct and right. I don't know, it just felt good. So that's why I went with this. And I did add some black sort of lines to the yellow. I don't know. I've always wanted to do this kind of style. So I just figured I'd go for it now. And I really like it. Like, I am super happy I did it. I don't know if you like it. You'll have to let me know, but it, it does work. I know it's supposed to be a test of the markers, but the white line has kind of helped a little bit as well. With the design of these pens being so large and bulky, you'd think that they would be very uncomfortable to hold, and they're not. The only time you experience any sort of uncomfortableness is when you're pulling off the caps. Now, this might be a more personal issue, but I have a piece of glass in my left thumb. It's been in there for years, and it really made it uncomfortable trying to pull off the caps every two seconds. So, yeah. As predicted though, once we came onto the face, uh, this is where it became very difficult. The markers were not suited to even try to attempt a refined, small detail kind of style. Um, but the style that we have been using throughout this entire piece does work well with doing this sort of watercolory type style. It really did work well with the face and as long as you can separate the being refined mindset to just being free, you can enjoy these markers and have a good time with them. And of course, please remember that it doesn't have to be clean. This is art, and art is supposed to be expressive, it's supposed to be fun, and it's supposed to be free. So don't worry too much if you can't refine your details, it doesn't have to be, it's okay. And with that said, here is the drawing. It looks pretty good. I'm very happy with the piece, but I'm not going to review it right now. We're going to move on to the second side using the Ohuhu markers, and we'll come back at the end and review both of them together. So let's jump into those. So now right off the bat, I'm going to start with a very weird positive here, and this is going to be touching on what I just said about the caps of the pens with the previous ones. But using the Ohuhu, holding these Ohuhus, <laughs> is an immediate pleasure when compared to the previous pens. The design removes all of that pressure that you feel pressing against your hand for an extended period of time, especially when removing the caps. With me in particular having a piece of glass in my thumb, this is a very rare example, but I don't feel any discomfort pulling the caps off and putting the caps back on. Now with this piece, I figured that I would keep the shadows and stuff like that in the same positions as I did with the left hand side to make it a fair assessment and a fair judgment. It doesn't mean I'll be doing the same style, but I will start off in the same style and see what happens as we go. You never know if this pen set is going to work the same way as the others, so maybe this style isn't best suited for them, but we're going to start with it and see what happens. <laughs> Overall, the style is working, and that's pretty cool. However, I am noticing there are some sort of strokes with the bullet nib. Um, I can't quite get rid of them, and perhaps that's my fault because I'm not attempting to blend them any further, as they are on top of the highlights. However, I didn't do that with the other side, 
and those stroke marks weren't visible. So take what you will from that, but I'm not really convinced by the bullet nib right now. However, I do think when we come to the refined smaller areas, the bullet nib of these pens is going to be very, very, very useful. And as we move on to the yellow areas, let me just say that I'm going to try to mirror what we did on the other side. Immediately, I do feel that these pens are a little bit smoother and they blend a little bit better. However, the overlaying, they tend to wash each other up. Now, this didn't happen when I was using the blues, but using the yellows, they are washing each other up, which is very weird. Um, other than that, no major differences between the two. Oh, and regarding the black lines, so I figured I would just add them again on this side just for contrast so they both match up each other. Yes, I am kind of losing what I've just done, but I think the black lines just work with the blending. I hope anyway. I still stand by what I said. I really do like the way they look, so I hope you do too. And finally, we get to the face. Now, this is where I'm going to get to use the bullet nib to, I guess, its strengths. And yeah, it really does work much, much better than I thought and much better than the other side. It does allow for me to have very refined details. It allows me to get into those smaller areas that I couldn't do with the other side. And the fact that neither of these pens bleed is very nice and does make doing these smaller areas a little bit more free and you don't have to worry about risking any bleeding or over bleeding or anything like that. It's quite nice. Gah! Damn, would you look at that chin? Okay guys, so the drawing is complete and I'm super happy with the results. Looking at them side by side, they look really nice, but let's take a closer look at them individually and we'll talk about them both together in a moment. Starting off with Amazon's cheapest, what can be said about these markers? For 30 cents, they are incredible. The results are beautiful. Okay, yes, they do have their flaws and they're probably not suitable for small work. The ink flow is super fast, However, this carefree style is such a pleasure to create. It's free, it's fun, and it's what art is about. I don't care about the results being clean. Let it be fun. Did you enjoy it? I enjoyed it. That's all that matters. I think it looks great, and I'm very happy with the results. And of course, please bear in mind, these aren't my best pieces of work. That's not the point. I'm testing them. But even being casual, I can really admire what these markers are. The value, the quality, and the results are there. I absolutely love the washed out colors. I think that they work extremely well with each other. And even if you choose the wrong colors, such as the purples and the blues and the greens that I had mixed in there, they worked well together. That is a true testament to these pens, and I really do like them. Now, taking a look over at the Ohuhu markers. Fucking <laughs> brilliant name. I'll start with these words. The hype I heard on these pens was incredible. It had set them to an incredibly high standard, so I was beyond excited to use them. And honestly, the results are nice, and I do really like them, but by comparison with leading brands, as these are often compared to, I think they do fall short. The colors themselves are extremely vibrant and they're very nice colors. If you like this style of work, you really will get some great usage out of them having these bright, vibrant colors. And I think the bullet nib of these pens make them fantastic for small pieces of artwork and getting those minor areas. But when we put them side by side, each marker set produced quality results and I wouldn't discredit either of them. My harsh words are due Due to this being a critique and while we can see the good between these markers it's the bad that we could learn the most from plus when a marker has as much hype as the ohuhu markers i have to be critical that all being said would i recommend either of these or both of them yes i would to both but this video isn't about me this video is about you after watching this video which side do you prefer the touch color coming in at 30 cents per marker which by the way is ridiculous or the ohuhu markers coming in at 50 cents per marker. And of course, please do remember that the styles I chose today were just my own. They were a bit of fun. That's not to say these markers can't perform in other areas. I will say each have positives and negatives. But for me, my personal preference, I would sway towards the touch colors, the cheapest markers on Amazon. Okay guys, so there we have it. The video is done and I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did like this video, a like rating is always appreciated. But most importantly, please leave a comment down below what you would like to see me do in the next video. And of course, your thoughts on this video. I'd like to thank you all so much for your support on this series. It's been absolutely incredible. And thank you for your ongoing support. If you do continue to support it, you don't have to support it if you don't want to. If you don't like this series, let me know down below. Just leave a comment and just say, screw you ADC, we hate you. And you should definitely not do this. <laughs> I love you guys. Even the haters. You guys are, you guys are lovely. Yeah. Alrighty, so from myself, from Bob and the Ducklings, I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye. And of course, 
And that's it. Bye bye. <laughs> oh my god. These get worse and worse. Every outro is just getting worse and worse. I think I'm just gonna stop the videos mid.